praise the name of the Lord. We serve a great God, amen? How great is our God? Amen, he's, he's greater than any situation, any circumstance we might be facing today, amen? Amen, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How great is our God.
reason I could have been dead in my sleep, but he wake me up this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. The scripture, for the, the theme for today is friends of sinners. And I'll be reading from Luke chapter 7, verses 34, 36 to 39. And Isaiah 2, 3 to 6. The son of man is come eating and drinking, and he say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. And one of the Pharisees desired that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the meat in the Pharisee's house, bought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. Reading from Mark chapter, chapter 2. Verses 13 to 16. And he went forth again into the seaside, and all the multitudes resorted unto him, and he taught them. And he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for they were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? It was the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Edwards. God is good. Come on, give God some praise. I was looking for someone to read for me a couple of weeks ago. And some, someone, an old lady, or shouldn't I say old, one of my sisters meet me in front. You guys got to bear with me to preach this message. And she said, I would have read for you. And I said, oh yeah? I said, okay. But Sister Edwards, I mentioned this before. In Bible school, from work to Bible school, I was so tired. And I was reading my Bible school teacher, Sister Claire Roberts. God bless you. I don't know what happened, but I fell asleep. And I was just reading while sleeping. Opened my eye, jumped like five or six chapters. I don't know if Sister Clear knows what's going on, but my sister, she, she picked up from the because she knew that I was tired. So I just want to thank God for you, Sister Edwards, helping you out in Bible school. But God is good. So today our theme is Friend of Sinners. I don't know about you, but. How many of us in here have friends that are sinners? Come on. Almost all of us, right? So, you know, this is a deep subject and touching. You see, there are some friends who are more special than any, any other I have ever met. I call him Jesus. And he called me friend. See, as you go through the Bible, you will find several places where God and Jesus has referred to certain person as friend, as their friend. 
In the Old Testament, Exodus 3, 11, you'll find God spoke to Moses as a man speak to a friend face to face. James 2, 23, Abraham is called a friend of God. Second Chronicles 27, Abraham's seed, the faithful of Israel, is called a friend of God. This misunderstanding of Jesus Christ's mission, they call him a friend of sinners. I had wanted to say this big confusion, but it might come over wrong, but I said it anyhow. But they call him a friend of sinners. So I name it this misunderstanding of Jesus Christ's mission. Although they call him a friend of sinners. It would have been easier for Jesus if they had called him a friend of the righteous. Ain't it? But the Bible make it clear in Mark chapter 2 verse 17. You could put it up there for me, Milton. I was like, well. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. He did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Come on, somebody. Help me preach here today. The Jews, the, Jew, the Jewish leaders are watching Jesus, trying to find some reason to attack his ministry. They are looking for fault. That they will, they will find plenty about the Lord and his work that they would not like. As Jesus walked along the shore of Galilee, he passed a man by the name of Levi, who was working at the toll booth where tax were collected and a lot of trade traffic and that passed through that town. And the, and the tax were collected on everything that passed through the tongue, included the fishermen on Galilee, on the Sea of Galilee. The Levite was a tax collector. He worked for the Roman government. So as long as they met the, uh, the code, the, Rome, the Romans didn't care how much they collect. As a result, the tax collector became very rich because they overcharged the people. They pay Rome and they kept the different for themselves. So because the Levi was a tax collector for the Rome, he was one of the most hated person in Israel. His people and his nation as a tax collector, and I would imagine that, that the Levite was also disappointed to his parents. He was from the tribe of Levi. He would have been learned the things of God to serve in the temple and follow his father's footsteps. And, 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 and as a righteous man or a religious man, instead the Levites become a traitor who turn his back on his family, then his nation, and God. But Jesus was passing. Come on, somebody. Jesus was passing near the Levites and turned to him and said, follow me. It was a call to the Levites to leave his old life and begin a new life of following Jesus. The question is, why would Jesus have use for a man like this? There's only one thing I can say. It's grace. Come on, somebody. In spite of his job, his lifestyle, and his failure, and his sin, Jesus loved Levi. And he called him to a new life. 
And sometimes when Jesus call your name, when Jesus call you, he changed your name Amen. from Levite to Matthew. Amen. And you can find that in Matthew 9.9. 9. This man would be given a new name after he was saved. He would become known as Matthew. You could find that in Matthew 9.9. 9. You could put it up there, Matt, uh, Milton, if you want to. He would, be a, he would be faithful. He would be a faithful follower of Jesus. And he would give his life. For the Lord to, that saved his soul. Amen. Now Jesus was invited to the Levi house for a dinner party. This is important. He was invited to this party. On one side, you have Jesus and his many followers. And on the other side, you have the Levi and his friends and his associates sitting. They call them publicans and sinners. And some other tax collectors call sinners. The word sinner was used to refer to prostitutes and to those who, who do not observe the strict religious rule of the scribe and the Pharisees. Now, let me tell you why the Levite hosts this party. It was an opportunity to say farewell to his whole life and an opportunity to introduce his friends to Jesus. His life was changed and, and, and he wants everyone else to know it. Amen. He wants his friends to meet Jesus. And he wants them to experience the same change of life that he has experienced meeting Jesus. Meeting Jesus will do that to you. Amen. Jesus. The friends. Jesus' friends you see in his sharing. He share his love, he share his lessons, and he share his life. Jesus' friends you see in his, in, in, his, in his salvation. We are chosen by him, we are called by him, and we are comforted by him. They call him a friend of sinners. They call him a friend of sinners. Let me tell you the story about the sinful woman. But before I, I, I go there, I ask a question. If you have anyone in your household or friends that are sinners, and then 90% of the people said yes, and said, come on, speak to me. They raised their hands. My best friend, a sinner. I left Guyana many years ago. And he, he communicated with my mom. She was in this country yet. She said, yes, you're a Christian now. I don't know what triggered his head, triggered him. But that's my best friend. Make a long story short. I'm not going to tell you my past, but it's going to come up. He gave his life to Christ. And he's a pastor right now. I was still trying to ask, call him last night to find out what really triggered it. What I know it was the relationship that the two of us had. And I did not throw him aside. I think the old folks said, do not throw away a bad for somebody else's good, right? This was my best friend. He didn't give up on me. We do a lot of stuff together. But I think because he heard that my life was changed and I accept Christ, that's what drive him. He 
because he's probably said in his heart, you know, there's something I had seen in Christ that I'm so passionate about. And he tried Jesus. So if you're going to try anything, young people, try Jesus. They call him a friend of sinners. But let me tell you the story about this sinful woman. A woman in the tongue was a sinner. Most of you know the story. And I want you to understand that all people are sinners. That's in Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So to call a particular woman a sinner was to say something about her lifestyle. This woman, uninvited appearance was bad enough. And this, and this became awkward when she took out the alabaster, the alabaster jar of perfume. And she anointed Jesus' feet. She weeped on his feet. She kissed his feet. She wiped his feet with her hair. You see, when it comes to someone like Jesus, in the spotlight, she was breaking all the rules of decency. And you want to know something? She didn't care. I think the spirit, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I think the spirit of God came upon this woman and lead her to Christ in her sinful state of mind to show love to Jesus and to honor him for bringing the grace of God into her life. Her many sins was forgiven. That's why she loved so much. Note here. Most of the house, the hosts of the house saw everything that she was doing to Jesus. And he kept it in his mind. And didn't say anything to her or to Jesus. Because they, want, they, they were looking to accuse Jesus of something against God's law. I am pretty sure that many of us was put into this same position numerous times. I was coming from Jersey. I, I tried asking my brother, he's sitting in the audience, if he could remember what was the occasion. He couldn't remember, I couldn't remember. But I know that I was dressed in my suit, so we went to somewhere. I can't remember we went up to Jersey. I went to some seminar, maybe a funeral. I can't remember for nothing, G. And he couldn't remember. But what I, what I could remember that when we crossed over the bridge, getting to Brooklyn, we both was hungry because we, like, we was out there all day. So I said, boy, I said, Dre, there's only one place going to open tonight. And that's the hills. Most Westerners will know the hills is a club. I said, well, I'm going there. I'm hungry. So I walk into the club. In my suit. So, you know, from the time I walk in there, because I know a lot of people. I don't know who know me because it was a little dark and stuff like that. And I walked to the bar and I said, I need, what you got? She said, I got whatever. Anyhow, she took out the food. She gave it to me and my brother. He can't even remember what he ate. <laughs> anyhow, he had some fish cake or something like that, he said. Anyhow, we get the food. I'm coming out of the bar. Well, of course, I know a lot of people in the bar know me. It's dark. I don't know them, but they know me. But if I could see, I know I recognize them. By the time I step out of the bar, not even out much, my phone ring. Brother Yuri, my husband just called me. You're in the bar. But I want to know what he's doing there. 
he just sell himself out. And that's what happened, you know. So let me say this to you, so you could understand. As a man or a woman who is a servant of the Lord, someone always looking to find something that you are doing that is sinful and wrong. They are looking to judge you when the Lord said you should not judge. None of us is God. God is God all by himself who is sitting high and looking below. Leave judgment to God. Jesus said to the woman, your sin is forgiven. A person behaving in a sinful way always try to cover it up with an excuse. Amen? Come on, somebody. That's me right there. Even when I'm leaving and my wife asks me where I'm going, I tell her the truth and she still believes it. That's all right. After 37 years, you get used to the couch, right, G? <laughs> Come on, guys. You got to help me preach this message. Now let me go. You see, a person behaving in a sinful way always try to cover up with an excuse. Jesus didn't have to make an excuse. Everything that Jesus did was pointing to the cross. Come on, somebody. Jesus was the son of man. Jesus was the divine teacher. Jesus was the soul winner. Jesus was the great physician. Jesus was the bread of life. Jesus was the fountain of the living water. Jesus was the light of the world. Jesus was the good shepherd. Jesus was the re resurrected the resurrection and life. Jesus was the king of king and lord of lord. Jesus was a humble servant. Jesus was the great encourager. Jesus was the true vine. Jesus was the great gift, gift giver. Jesus was the great high priest. Come on, somebody. Jesus was the crucifying king. Jesus was the resurrection, resurrected redeemer. Somebody shout, Jesus. Jesus. How much time has the Lord come true for you? How much time has he moved the mountain in your life? How many times has he brought you through the valley? How many times he come through for you when it seems that there is no way out? Somebody shout Jesus for the second time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just want you to understand the story with this woman with the alabaster box. It wasn't easy. But I'm going to let my sister explain this to you in a song. So you will understand the sin of this woman. I don't care where you are. What is your condition? When you come in contact with the Lord, your life will never be the same. I'm a proof standing here. But God has been good. Preacher. God has been good. I'm not going to close now, but after this song, there's something I have to say. Oh, hallelujah. May you be blessed with this song.
she made her way to Jesus. She stumbles through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain, some spoken anger, hurtful whisper.
Come on, somebody stand in your feet and give God some praise. Come on. Has he been good to you? Come on, you wake up this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, Lord. But I thank you. Where you brought me from, Lord God, I was nothing, Lord God. So we just want to give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God is good. God is good. Baba, Baba. They accuse him. They accuse him as a friend of sinners. But that's, that's not true. Milton put up John chapter 15, verse 14. Up there on the for me. People will accuse you for many things. They accuse Jesus as a friend of sin. But who are who is his, who are his real friends? And Jesus made it clear in the Bible. He said, you are my friend. If you do whatever I command you. Come on, somebody. You want to be Jesus' friend? Follow his commandment. Love one another. Esteem each other better than yourself. Draw close to him. Read his word. Don't be a stumbling block to your brother or your sister. Friends, I could stand up here and testify of God's goodness in my life and where God brought me from. I am standing here, you don't even know how I'm feeling inside. I mean, I'm probably not supposed to be here this morning. My wife don't know what I'm telling you this. But I pick up a bug on a job Friday night. I wasn't supposed to work. But the job was a very filthy job. But I tried to help out the guy who took the job because he was a part of my men's ministry. And he calls one of the guys that was the night before instructing him how to do this job. And they messed the job up. So the burden was on him, so he took the job. So they called me in the office and asked me if I'm gonna work with this guy. Normally I would have been here on Friday night. I said, who it was, says the dread. I said, okay, I will take the job in because he's a part of my men's ministry. And I pick up, go there, had on a white suit and everything. I didn't put a mask on my face. He had on his mask. And I said, Abraham, could you remember if I had a mask on? He said, no. I noticed you didn't have no mask on. Make a long story short, I get sick on the job. I said, God, why? Did I take this job? And something was preventing me from preaching. And I go on my knees and say, you know what? I may not make it, but I know G might got a copper boat service. But whatever happened, I pull on every strong all over my life. And I said, you had kept me back here for a purpose. Make a long story short. We complete this job and not the way that they think it would have went. But instead of taking all night, I did that job in three or four hours. Even the union, everybody was surprised. Because I prayed on the job. I said, God, whatever comes out here, I'm not going to take anyone's advice. I'm going to do how I'm supposed to do this job. It was finished. But I got sick. Just walking into my pew to sit down and I just feel something come on me. It's just like when people put their hands on you and you feel like a heavy spirit come on you. Well, something like that. 
And I said, Lord, help me. My wife, I don't even know how I reach home, but I drive home. And I reach home. And I started to, everything that came into my spirit to do, I started to do. And God was good to me. I'm preaching here and my throat is locking up. Never happened before. Like dry. But what I want to say to you, be encouraged, woman or man of God. They're going to look at you and they're going to always find some fault in you. People are looking at you. The way you dress, the way you carry yourself. And if you're a man of God, represent Christ. Jesus loved the Levite. And he called him. In spite of his background or whatever happened. His name changed. When God called you, he changes your name. I mean you act different, you dress different, and you do things different that please him to God. So friends, be encouraged. And if you have someone in your household that don't know God, be an example to that individual. They will see the light of Jesus in you and glorify your Father in heaven. You can't be cursing to your children, cursing your brother and sisters out, and representing Christ when you come in here on Sunday. I'm not pulling you down, I'm just being real. Like I said, it was up there. You want to be a friend of God? Who is his real friend? You who are his friend. He says, if you do whatever I command. That's all you do. Read his word. Whatever he command you to do. Then you become a friend of God. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Give God some praise. I am trusting God. That everyone here is saved. But if you are not saved. And know the Lord as your personal savior. I'm not going to prolong this any longer. Could you just raise your hand? I don't want to close this service. And there's someone that came to give their life to the Lord. I see it time and time. My, my, my good friend, my mentor, closed the service. And at the end of the service, the young man walked to him and said, Pastor, why didn't you make this altar call? I came here to give my life to the Lord. So I'm not going to close without making this appeal. So if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, I need, I need you to just raise your hand. I thank God that everyone is safe. Just continue serving God. It's the sweetest thing that you will ever experience knowing the Lord inside. Sometimes you can go through some rough road high water they're going to talk about you pull you down but continue trusting God amen give God some praise <laughs> hallelujah God is good praise the Lord everybody what an awesome word hallelujah thank God for his servant this morning amen Hallelujah. We had a spiritual day today, today, where this morning we were told to anoint our head with oil so we can be prepared for the task of what God is calling us to do. And today, to be a friend of God, you have to follow his commandments. And so, saints of God, these are critical times. There's so much going on around us. And so, we have to be spiritually alert and obedient to the will of God this morning. Amen? So we thank God for the word this morning, hallelujah. We thank God for the blessing this morning, hallelujah. God has been so faithful to us, full gospel. So we continue to look unto the Lord this morning. 
as we prepare to uh, worship the Lord with our offering. I want to give this opportunity to someone here in the sanctuary or if you're online, um, you're here for the very first time. This is the first time you've come into the house to worship with us. We want to acknowledge your presence. Anyone in the house this morning? Anyone? Amen. We do have a beautiful sister. Would you mind standing so we can give you a grand full gospel welcome? Our ushers are coming to you with a packet. Uh, we want to stay connected with you. There's a card in there. Worship with us on behalf of our founder, Pastor, Pastor Michael Backus, and our beautiful congregation. We want to thank you for coming, and we hope you'll come and be with us again to worship. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we're going to prepare to worship the Lord with our giving, and we want to remind you as you give. The, the missions ministry to our different um, building fund ministry and all the other ministry we want to remember these ministries as you give so prepare as we give the ushers are going to are going to direct you from the back as our musician worship us with a selection amen Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We just praise your holy name, and God, we thank you. We can come in no other name but in the precious name of Jesus as your Holy Spirit guide us today, Lord. We thank you that, God, you've given us the strength to gain wealth, and Father, we bring back that portion unto you as you've commanded us, God. We pray that you will bless us truly indeed, Lord. Bless the tithes and the offering, Lord Jesus. Bless those, oh Lord God, Lord Jesus, will oversee, oh God, this house, oh God, every finance of this house father we thank you god continue to bless and keep them as you guide them in your way we pray we give god praise and thanks in no other name but in the precious name of jesus we pray amen hallelujah jesus i think i want to give uh minister galton collins an opportunity at this time he has some wonderful announcement we did have it overhead but he's going to praise the lord minister i just want to remind us that we are going to be restarting our in person Bible study on the 1st of May. The 1st of May in person right here. I thought you'd be excited about that. I don't know. And we are going to start off with dinner and a movie. The movie is God's Not Dead. Dinner and a movie. I can tell you what you're going to have for dinner too. You're going to be having uh, 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 
chicken wings and french fries and some some other hors d'oeuvres. So for those of you who don't eat you know, meat and all of the kinds, of we're going to have something for you also. Amen? C can somebody get excited about that? We're meeting on May 1st. And we will meet at 7 o'clock because we're showing a movie. We start half an hour earlier. We're going to start at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock on May 1st. How many of you am I going to see? Could you wave your hand if you're going to be there? Come on, get some more hands up there. Bring your family. That's right. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. And bring your family as well. Amen. As you come. Hallelujah. We thank God for that opportunity. I truly do miss the dinner and the movie. And I'm so grateful we're starting this in-house Bible study once more. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to just have a few additional announcements that we did have a few overhead. Um, and I just want to mention to the parents and family of the uh, babies who are going to be dedicated. We are going to do that right after our announcement. So just get ready and prepare to meet us at the altar. Amen. So we just want to go through some of the additional announcements for May. Coming up in May, May Sunday, May the 5th, we'll be celebrating Pastor Michael Backus and Sister Patricia Backus birthday. So come prepared as we celebrate the man and woman of God that God has given unto us in this uh, fellowship. Amen? So please make a note of that as well. Amen. And then right, following right after that weekend, okay. hallelujah. So we're then following the next week. The next week is May 11th and May 12th. What week is that? Mother's Day. Amen. And so Saturday, May the 11th, we do have a pre-Mother's Day breakfast at 10 a.m. Um, the tickets are $20. We do have women of the women's ministry who uh, have tickets. They'll be in the lobby, and you can get more information there from us. Just come and have a wonderful time in the Lord. Bring your entire family. It might be Mother's Day, but it's all about the family. Amen? So it's 10 a.m. on Saturday, May 11th, and then comes Sunday. We celebrate all the mothers, all right? We celebrate all the mothers. Some of you have spiritual mothers. We celebrate all of them. And so we thank God for that opportunity that we can celebrate mothers. Amen. And most of you have seen overhead, um, Brother Milton had put up coming up in June. June is, what happens in June? Father's Day month. Amen. So we're going to celebrate the month come in June as well. But in the beginning of the month, June the 8th, as you've seen, is Hope Day. And many of you know what Hope Day means and what goes on with Hope Day. Hope Day is where we have an opportunity to bring the gospel to the community, to let them know that Jesus loves them. Amen. And we do it in different ways. And so uh, it's going to be in different locations, churches coming together on this day, June 8th, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, all right, Connecticut, and now we do have a location in Florida. So God is opening up many doors for us. And so we will have a meeting right after service. So those of you who are interested to come on board, you'll come and meet some of our team leaders, and you'll know more about it. But I will also be sending out, uh, we do have training, virtual training, this coming Thursday at 7.30, and I'm going to share that information if you would like to be part of that. Amen? And we do have other activities that are coming up where we're going to do community outreach um, here in our Brooklyn community. Amen? We thank God for what he continues to do. Also coming up, there is a mission uh, trip that's going to Guyana, and they're going the week of July the 8th, spearheaded by Minister Roseman Petrie. And so we want to give you an opportunity. You can have more details on uh, how you can contribute towards this uh, mission trip. And of course, we, they always need your prayers. Amen? God is faithful. So I think that by way of announcement, most of the other announcements you see overhead. Also, I just want to remind you as well, as we're starting um, our Bible study, we're going to also have our prayer time where we will meet at 630 
uh, we meet for prayer on Wednesdays, and then we start go right into our Bible study. So we thank God for getting us back to that place. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're gonna prepare to uh, for the baby uh, dedication. Uh, if the family wouldn't mind coming and meeting us at the altar, is there a baby to be dedicated today? Hallelujah. The family, you can come at this time. Amen. <laughs> 